So the first thing I'm going to demonstrate today is how to modify a cylinder, okay? So the thing about a cylinder is that it's the basic form that you need to know how to make for everything else except the bowl, right? If you make a plate, it's a cylinder. It's just got a really wide floor, so you form the floor wider, and then the walls are shorter, which is the lip of the plate. If you're making a vase, a mug, um, anything that, a teapot, right? Most of those start with a cylinder shape, and then you modify it and you change it to go out and go in and all that kind of stuff, right? So that's what we're going to do today is a modified cylinder and then after that I'm going to do a little trimming demo for you too. Okay, so I'm working on a wheel that has fat pins in it. So I'm going to use my fat meat thing here so that I don't get the chatter. Um, certain forms really require you to throw on a bat, like plates, because they're low and shallow and you can't like take them off the wheel when you're done. Uh, just a coffee mug, you really don't have to throw on a bat, but if you have a, it doesn't make a difference if you have a wheel that has the bat pins already in it, you might as well just attach a bat and then cut it off from there. Okay, so first thing I want to point out to you is that I'm missing my sponge. Can you grab me a sponge from another toolkit? Um, is that I took the time, thanks, I took the time to wedge my clay, okay? Now I noticed a lot of you guys are just sticking the log of clay right there on your table and you're slicing it off and then you're getting like a hamburger patty, like flat. And then you guys are trying to like slap that flat piece down, you know what I mean, and like pound it into shape. Take the time to wedge your clay and to get a decent ball shape from it before you begin. A little bit of moisture down to make it stick. If you have a pupukaka ball to start with, you're going to end up with a pupukaka cylinder, right? So take the time, wedge it, make it into a ball like this before you smack it down. The other thing I'm seeing people doing is like physically abusing their clay before they start. And they're like taking this and pounding it and denting it and things like that. And all that does is make little pockets that make it really difficult. And even if you do kind of get it centered after that, you might even trap air pockets. So don't abuse your clay, but do tap center it. So if you want to make sure it's good and stuck down, use the flat of your hand instead of your fist. And give it a few love pads like that to get it where you need it to be, okay? None of that denting. Once you get it mostly where it needs to be, then you can get going. I'm just gonna do a simple base shape today so I can show you how things move in and out. <coughs> I guess I got it a little bit too wet. Try again. If you're working with a larger amount of clay and you're having trouble centering it, center the top first. Get the top under control, and then go back and get a little bit more if you need to. I don't really recommend that you guys start making, trying to attempt to make a huge vase with this. I really would make something small like a bud vase or a coffee cup or something like that. Because throwing with more clay becomes a different skill. And then you move on to that skill when you become a level three. So the other thing is, and I don't know if you guys have really done it or not, is to just go back there. I do have a video on YouTube of how to throw a cylinder. And honestly, watching somebody throw a pot is a far different experience after you've done it yourself. If you're just watching somebody else do it, like when you watch my demo on the first day, you've never tried it yourself. It's like, yeah, that's cool, and it looks really easy, but it, it doesn't mean much. When you start watching people after you've done it, then you're like, oh, I didn't know you could do that, or oh, I don't do it that way, and then you can try something different next time. I happened to grab the clay that was super duper hard. All right, so you guys know all this. You know centering. You know how to open the form. <coughs> Draw 
ครับต้องโอ้ To measure for a quarter of an inch in terms of thickness. <laughs> and I mean, I think it's good practice, or you'll notice that I kind of keep a clean space. You know, if my hands get too dirty, I kind of wipe them off. And wheel flooring is definitely not clean, but there's no reason that you have to have a bunch of gunk laying around. of you guys are. You've centered it and you're pulling the walls. Now when you're going to modify a cylinder, to get an A cylinder I always say it's got to be quarter of an inch floor and quarter of an inch walls, but when you start to modify it or change its shape, there's different kinds of pulls. So like the first couple of pulls is really me just making the cylinder and I am trying to go for a little bit thicker than a quarter of an inch this time. Because when I get it about that thick, I'm going to start doing shaping pulls, which means I'm going to do a pull, but at the same time I'm doing a pull, <coughs> I'm going to be making the clay go out or come back in, okay? taller than this. And almost throw it as if it's a little bit like this instead of straight up and down, just to keep that lip under control. So give it a collar in or do what you need to do for that. All right, so this next pull I'm going to do, I'm just going to belly it out a little bit down here, and then I'm going to have it go in. I'm just going to do a real simple vase shape so that you can see how I bring it out, and then I bring it back in and out again, okay? So basically what's happening is this. Inside the form, because I've got this hand inside and this hand outside, there's a floor that's about a quarter of an inch thick, which means this hand is always lower than this hand. And there's a space in between the two hands, right? The fingertips are lined up, but they shouldn't be exactly lined up like this. There's a space between the hands. And as I'm doing my pull, the clay is flowing through that space and it's getting stretched out, okay? Um, it's really the same concept as when you guys were in level one and you learned how to pull a handle. You had to squeeze and pull and it would stretch and it would get longer. It's just that the wheel is spinning so it kind of happens um, as the wheel turns. Um, so here's what's going to happen. When I go to belly out, I'm going to start adjusting my pressure. So when I want it to belly out, I'm going to start pushing harder with this hand. So normally I have you engage the right hand more to keep it up straight, but this I want to push. So I'm going to push with this hand. When I get to the point where I want to switch and bring it back in, the outside hand overtakes the inside hand, and I do this. So it's kind of like a dance. When I want to go out, I push this way. When I want to go in, my hand switches, and the right hand is on top, and it's switched, okay? So, Slowing my wheel down because I don't want that centrifugal force to be a problem. And now I always use a sponge on the outside just because I like to. 
And I'm almost kind of using the side of my <coughs> finger here as opposed to the fingertip. If you feel like when you're using the very tip of your finger, the clay is ripping off, try just flipping it using the side. So I'm going to push out. And then when I get to the point where I want to make a neck, I'm going to switch. This hand ends up being on top. And I push in. And then at the top, I can just kind of flare it out a little bit like that. Okay? Now, I'm not going to push this shape too far, and you guys don't have to either. But I do want to show you. For what I expect out of you guys right now, this is enough. Okay? But I'm going to take it a step further and show you just how to kind of finish the shape nicely. And that usually means you're using some kind of a rib. Now, you guys always have the ridged ribs in your toolkits, right, with the, the serrated edge on it. But there's all kinds of ribs in the um, extra tool bin. There's metal ribs, there's rubber ribs, there's wood ribs. Wood ribs are nice for when you're making a bowl to make the curve. I think it's preference for this point if you want to use a rubber rib or a metal rib that doesn't have the ridges. I like the metal ones, but they're both flexible, so they both work. And as I begin to refine this shape, I'm going to use this rib to really smooth this out. Now, here's what happens. I'm using the, it, the rib like this, and it kind of takes all that slip off the surface of it, for one. But I'm bending it because I place my thumbs. So I can make it fit the contour of the pot. I start with my wrist kind of like this, and you'll see that I kind of, as I'm following that curve, I kind of twist my wrist and follow up like this. So I'm doing this at the same time I'm pulling. You don't want to have the rib straight like this because you take clay off. You want to lay it a little more flat, and you don't want to use the size that has sharp corners because then you'll dig, you know, a groove into the pot. So I'm using this side like this. My sponge. Look at how low my head is so I can see the profile of my pot. My inside hand is pushing out to the rib to really force that shape out. I'm bending my rib and I'm twisting my wrist. And it just leaves a really nice, clean finish to the piece. Kind of cleans all that slip off. And then the last couple things I do are undercut the foot. For sure make, it, make sure that if there's any water in there, you take it out. So I'm going to undercut the foot. So I'm really going to look at the profile of that pot. wood tool and then I like to especially if I'm not going to trim I like to dig underneath it with the nose of the tool a little bit and create like a little shadow line underneath makes it look a little lighter and not so much like the base got like dropped on the table so I make that undercut just a little bit there and then the other thing I do is I chamois the, the lip so that it's kind of nice and you can do this just with a little scrap of plastic I'll just take this hunk of plastic from the clay bag because it happens to be right next to me. If I can rip it. My hands are a little funny. Plus I'm feeling a little weak. Okay, that's more plastic than I need, but it'll do the trick, right? So you just take a little piece of plastic and you can get it a little wet so it slides. You're not applying much pressure, but you just kind of wrap it around the edge of the lip like that and it makes for a smooth finish to the lip, okay? So now, like I said, if you're already throwing on a bat, you just take the bat off and you let it dry. You let it set for one day or just enough time, even if you're, if you're gonna come after school that day, you can leave it out for the day and then come after school. But you want, this part's gonna dry quickly and the bottom's gonna take longer. So you leave it dry one day, then you um, 
flip it upside down so that the foot can dry, and then when the foot is <coughs> dry enough, then you trim it, okay? So always wire underneath though, even if you're not moving it, because if you don't wire underneath it, and it starts to dry, it wants to shrink, and it won't allow it to shrink, and you'll get cracking on the bottom, it'll break. So always wire underneath it, even if you're not gonna take it off, remove it, let it dry for a day, flip it, and then we trim, okay? Okay, you can quit that.